I was born in Rochester, Minnesota in 1956. I went to Minnesota public schools until I was 16 and I went to boarding school in Switzerland. I was hiking with a biology teacher and she just reached down and picked up this thing off the ground. It was a marine fossil. I said, well, what is this doing up on top of the mountain? Intrigued, Lisa Tokes found the answer to that question as a geology student at Yale University. She went on to graduate school at Columbia's Lamont Doherty Geological Observatory. She is now a professor and chair of the University of California, San Diego's Scripps Institution of Oceanography. To her, geology is about... Storytelling. It's extremely complicated how the Earth got to where it is today. I'm interested in the Earth's magnetic field in the past, so I study geological and archaeological materials which contain records of the magnetic field. To track magnetism over history, you need to find that record sealed in place. Hot lava emerges from a volcano at a temperature so high that metals lose their magnetism. As the lava starts to crystallize, iron oxide particles trapped in grains of rock become magnetic but there is so much heat that the direction of magnetization keeps flipping. As the lava cools further, a small fraction of particles aligns with the Earth's magnetic field, then stops flipping. The rock acts as a giant magnetic recording device. The percentage of grains magnetized in a single direction indicates the strength of the magnetic field when the rock formed. Her husband, Professor Hubert Stoutigle, also studies volcanoes, so sometimes they work together. And on those projects, we could take our kids. And they thought that people just went out and drilled stuff. That was a family vacation. The Earth's magnetic field varies over the surface of the Earth and through time. It's a window into what's going on deep in the Earth because the magnetic field is generated deep inside the Earth. A magnetic field has two important attributes, direction and strength. Both vary over time and place, with the North and South Poles flipping at random intervals every 100,000 to million years. But Tokes needed more detailed data, especially for more recent events. She and friend Hagai Ron realized they could use ancient copper slag. Long ago miners would take ore, melt it, the copper separates, and what's left is a slag. They dumped it on the ground. So there's piles and piles of this waste. One of the titles of the talk that I give is getting something out of what nobody else wants. Her research on the Earth's magnetic field strength, paired with years of work on how and when sediments form, help paleontologists, geologists, and archaeologists establish accurate dates and locations. The magnetic field deflects charged particles, bombarding the Earth from the Sun. The more intense the Earth's magnetic field is, the better it can deflect the Sun's punishing rays. If they weren't deflected, we would gradually erode the atmosphere. A few years ago, people realized that the magnetic field was dropping very quickly. If it drops at the same rate it's dropping now, it'll be zero in a few hundred years. Nothing happens to us, but our technology requires this shield. Our electrical grid can be damaged by solar magnetic storms. She and other geologists established the Time Averaged Field Initiative, a large database to store and interpret global rock magnetic data. It is integrated with her online textbook and open to the public. Tokes believes that everyone can find fun in science. You ask a question and then you figure out the answer to it. And that's what's fun. The 2014 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Earth and Environmental Science is presented to Lisa Tokes.